I'm a madman. I'm a lunatic, bad man, poison the water in your community. My, My name, name is Kefka, Kefka, and I'll wreck ya. Pause for the break, after which I'll disrespect ya. What's up, my wizards? It's Deb from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We like magic, and I'm coming to you today on the eve of Pro Tour 8 The Revolt. There's been a lot of buzz about this tournament so far, and we're pretty sure we know what the decks to beat are. I'm not going to show you any of those decks. I'm going to talk about them a lot, but I'm not going to show you any of those decks today. Instead, I'm going to show you what I would take down to Dublin, Ireland this weekend if I had to sleep up 75. So far, the first two weeks of the format moving into the Pro Tour have been dominated by Sahili Combo in various forms and the Green-Black Counters deck. And, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's, you know, Green-White Tokens is kind of making a thing. Trying to, at least. There's various aggro decks. Can we save Mardu Vehicles? There's all these different questions. Green-Red Energy coming back to be, like, maybe the best aggro deck in the format. So we know what the known evils are, you know. There are known knowns, but... There are also unknown unknowns, but today I'm going to bring you a deck that I think can handle nearly anything in the format, Black Red Control. Who would have thought? Right now, Rakdos actually has like a lot of really good tools to deal with all the problematic decks in the format. We've got Resiliency, we've got a lot of threats, we've got an insane removal package, so let me show you what I've got here. The deck plays 13 creatures and 2 vehicles, so 15, like 14 creatures, <laughs> whatever that math works out to. And we're going to start with Scrap heap scrounger right here which i'm gonna play a whole four copies of this is just a nice resilient threat you know 13 creatures isn't a whole lot but we will be able to bring this thing back once or twice over the course of a game and that kind of resiliency can work really well against decks that play counter spells scrounger is very very good against those and there's just a lot of good removal in this format right now even decks that aren't control are playing a bunch of grasp of darkness and fatal push at least in the board so we have to deal with those too and scrounger is just good against all that because he can keep coming back and hitting for the entire game He's also an artifact, which matters a great deal in this deck, because one of the best reasons to play Black Red is Unlicensed Disintegration. We want to play a whole play set of that card, obviously, and Scrap Heap Scrounger is an artifact for that, so just another reason, sort of gravy, to play this card. We're going to play two somewhat similar black creatures here. We're going to play two copies of Yeheni and two copies of Kalidus. Now, there are 20 different cards in this deck that are capable of killing creatures on the other side of the board, and that's pretty awesome with both of these. And they sort of feed off of each other, you know? You'll kill something, and you'll um, get a zombie, and you'll be able to sacrifice that to Yehenny to give it indestructible. So that's a cool interaction there. Yehenny's just good against all the removal in the format, because there is, again, a ton of removal in the format. It's even like, like Shock would usually take it out, but it's even okay against Shock, as long as you got like a zombie lying around. So... That's not so bad, and then Kalidus is pretty good against all the sort of, you know, rogue aggro decks that are running around trying to figure out what they're supposed to be in this format right now without Smuggler's Copter. So Kalidus just eats all of those alive, and is pretty good against green-white tokens, which is probably our worst matchup for some reason. They just go really wide. We've got a lot of targeted removal in the deck, but we don't have a whole lot in the main deck that can help us against something that goes that wide, and we're not super great against Planeswalkers, even with the couple of tools that we do have. So green-white tokens is a bad matchup for us, and Kalidus can really help us out there. I'm going to play two copies of Aethersphere Harvester in the deck. This is the two vehicles we're playing. Um, 13 creatures, I think, is just enough to get away with playing a couple of vehicles. And I like a few things about this over some stuff that I might rather play, like PNLR. That was a consideration in this slot, because it also is an artifact for unlicensed disintegration, sort of. You know, it goes kind of wide against certain decks we want to be able to do that against. But overall, I thought Harvester was the better choice. It gives, you know, it's an artifact for one, just like PO would be. So either way, that that's something we need in this slot. Um, it also flies, which is kind of important. We don't have a whole lot of that in this deck. It's got five toughness, where Pia only has three combined toughness, you know, so this can't be taken out um, by things like Grasp of Darkness. That's very, very important. It can't be taken out by Shock like Pia. This is sort of like a flying Kalidus in some ways, you know? It's just a big butt flyer, and this one's like a Kalidus that can't be taken out by Grasp. That's kind of cool. You know, just a big butt flyer in the air is really good against a lot of things in the format right now. And there's at least decent tech with it, you know. This gives um, Scrap Heap Scrounger something to do when it's on defense. You know, Scrap Heap Scrounger can't usually block, but if it's up on defense, it can at least crew this thing, and then you got a 3-5 flyer that can block for you. 
It also serves as an energy sink for another card that we're playing a little bit down the line here. Just does an awful lot of things in the deck, and you shouldn't have too hard of a time crewing it. Ether Sphere Harvester is showing up on a lot of sideboards in some tentative main decks, but I'm going to go ahead and take the plunge and add it to the main here because I really think it's that good in this format. On to the bigger creatures here, though. We're going to play three copies of Goblin Dark Dwellers because there are 15 different cards that this thing can essentially flash back for free in this deck. We don't play any spells that are above three, so literally every piece of removal in the deck, this thing can flash back. And it's a big body 4-4 four, four menace that's tough to block, you know, just really solid thread here that can flash back removal. And, you know, we have decent game against things like green-black counters, you know, because we have good targeted removal that can take out the creatures no matter how big they get. That's good, but they also play a pretty high density of threats, so we have to be able to flash back these removal spells and get the most mileage out of them. Goblin Dark Dwellers does all that and is huge. Speaking of huge, we're going to play two copies of Noxious Gear Hulk in the deck, which is a, sort of like a redundant version of Goblin Dark Dwellers, you know? Costs one more mana, has one more power, has the same ability, menace, you know, and kills a creature when it comes into play, which is basically what Goblin, uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers is there to do, too. The edge over Dark Dwellers is not only that's a little bit bigger, but also because it's an artifact, and that helps with unlicensed disintegration, so any extra mileage we can get out of disintegration is always good. We want to have that extra three damage, so yes to Noxious Gear Hulk is probably the best thing we could play at the top of the curve in this deck. Before I get to the spells, let's talk about the Planeswalkers in this deck. I actually think that it's a pretty good time to play Planeswalkers. Not a whole lot of decks can deal with resolved Planeswalkers, you know, so let me show you what we're doing here. We're going to play two copies of Liliana, two copies of Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and one copy of Obnixilis Reignited. Um, Liliana is just a solid Planeswalker <laughs> in this format. Just does so many things, and um, even her plus one is still pretty relevant right now against a bunch of tokens and stuff. So not a terrible play against those decks. Um, her negative two, though, is really where it's at for us in this deck. We want to turn that negative two into extra copies of Goblin Dark Dwellers or Kalidus or um, Noxious Gear Hulk is, is the dream there. So her negative two is one of the big draws to play the card, but her ultimate can just win the game sometimes. And when you re, uh, when, resol when resolved against control in the uh, early game, this can sometimes just lead to an earlier ultimate than you have any right of getting because Control may not be able to, a to answer it once it hits the board. So Liliana is free wins occasionally, removal all the time, and occasionally extra copies, basically, of huge creatures that we want into the battlefield triggers from. So everything about Liliana is awesome. Chandra serves as a little bit of ramp. That's always good. She's card advantage, which we want, in what is basically a control deck right here. Um, she also is removal. That's great. And she her ultimate is basically a win button as well. So... Yes to Chandra, we're going to play at least a couple copies of that because everything she does is desirable in this deck. And then one Obnix Silas is just because I really like Obnix Silas. He's also card advantage, which again we want. He's unconditional removal, which is really, really awesome. And his win condition isn't as much of a win button as the other two Planeswalkers, but it is a very inevitable win condition. So everything about Ob is good too. Play him. But on to the spells in the deck. We're going to talk about mostly removal. There's 15 different spells in the deck, and all but two of them are removal spells. <laughs> Let's talk about those real quick. We're going to play three copies of Shock to cap things off here. We've got so much unconditional and instant speed removal, too, against the Sahili Rai combo right now that I don't think we need to play the entire complement of Shock, but it's still worth playing it because it shuts down the Sahili combo by just targeting, basically, Sahili with the Shock, and then she's locked out of neg -tuing. So... That's how you want to play that most of the time. But it also can deal some damage to the face. It's a little bit of reach in the late game sometimes. It can take out small guys, which, you know, Scrap Heap Scrounger on the other side of the board takes that out, takes out Thraben Inspector, Servos, Thopters, you know, stuff like the tokens, whatever. So lots of different things this can take care of. Toolcraft Exemplar. There's a lot of stuff right now. So, you know, what, what Grim Flayer before it gets big? There's stuff. <laughs> so Shock will always find some kind of use. It's very, very rarely dead. Card is good. We're going to play Four Grasp of Darkness because we're a black deck and we, we, we will play Four Grasp. Really, nothing more to it than that in this format. Instant speed removal that disrupts the Sahili combo at instant speed. That's just 
that's what you play and can take out nearly every other creature too. So yes to this play all four. Speaking of yes to this play all four, auto include every day. This is unlicensed disintegration, which we will again play the play set of definitely. This is one of the entire reasons to play black red right now. Unconditional removal that's good whether or not you get the extra claws on it. But when you do get the extra claws, it's super stupid good. Like remember you can redirect that damage from the player to a planeswalker they control. That can be really relevant against these green white tokens decks and even against the Sahili Rai combo, you know, you'll kill their Felidar Guardian with the unlicensed disintegration and then kill their Sahili Rai some of the time with the three damage off of the disintegration. So, whew, like this <laughs> unlicensed is probably one of the best cards in this entire deck. Play all four. Yes, do it. A little bit of redundancy with disintegration here. We're just going to play one copy of murder in the deck as basically a fifth copy of disintegration that will never deal the damage. It's just that important. Right now, to pack instant speed, unconditional removal, not only against the Healy combo, which is the major boogeyman right now, but also against bling, uh, green black counters, because it'll kill the snake no matter how big it gets, walking ballista, which is, we hate that card, everyone hates that card right now, <laughs> walking ballista no matter how big it gets, um, it'll kill uh, Verderous Gear Hulk, it'll kill Rishkar, it doesn't matter. How big they get, it will kill them. So things like this, murder and disintegration, are just at a premium right now. I'd play five copies, definitely. We're actually going to sort of play six copies because we're going to play one copy of Ruinous Path. Another three mana unconditional removal spell. This one's not instant speed, but it can blow up Planeswalkers, which is definitely worth playing for us because we're really kind of bad against Planeswalkers, you know. Um, especially green-white tokens. Again, very bad matchup for us. So Ruinous Path is really good against the Gideons and the um, Nissas and stuff in that deck. I think we've got all the three mana removal we can, we can stomach without having another main deck copy of Path. But really helps out against decks that we're kind of bad against. But not all of our spells can be removal. I mean, they, they could, but we're not going to do that. We need a little bit of card draw to supplement our Planeswalkers, because otherwise our Planeswalkers would be the only thing that draws cards, and I don't want that. So we're going to play two copies of Live Fast in the deck. Now, if this was a three-color deck, I'd probably play Painful Truths, almost certainly. And I might even want to play Radiant Flames somewhere in the 75. But as far we can't converge. We're only playing the two colors, so it's not really worth it. I will play Live Fast. You know, it provides us a little bit of energy for Aether Sphere Harvester. Good energy to sink into that and it's also cute you'll lose two life to live fast but you're sinking it into lifelink so you gain it right back that's a cool interaction we also need a mid or late game refill and live fast is really good for that you know we've got harvester we've got Kalidus, we're gaining a little bit of life it won't matter that much that we're losing a couple life to this i just want the card advantage really badly we're going to play 25 lands in this deck, and it's pretty cut and dry. You know, we're just going to play, like, the Black-Red Duels, some Aether Hub, because we got a little bit of energy production going in the deck. We can sustain Aether Hub slightly, you know. So this is pretty much all I want to do. I don't see any reason to add, like, Inventor's Fair. I don't think we have enough artifacts to make that work. Like, Unlicensed Disintegration is good regardless of whether you have artifacts. Inventor's Fair requires a bunch of artifacts. I just... I don't see any reason to play any other lands. Let's just keep it simple. There's a lot of double black in the deck, if you haven't noticed. And there's even some double red, too. So we're just going to devote all of our energy here to... <laughs> cute pun. We're going to devote all of our energy here to getting colored mana. And here's the super important sideboard right here. There's obviously going to be some Fatal Push. We'll play, th uh, play three in the board for very obvious reasons. <laughs> it's just Fatal Push is ridiculous. Um, and we'll fill out the play set of Shock as well against not only small aggro decks, but obviously the Sahili combo. Um, Release the Gremlins is in there mostly just in case there's like an Aetherworks Marvel deck lurking around or maybe, you know, there's a bunch of different crazy wacky artifacts in this format that people could try and jank together and make something crazy out of. And Release the Gremlins is just sort of in there against any of those rogue things that you run up against that might be playing stupid artifacts. Lost Legacy is in there against combo, but also good against control. If you can hit a disallow or something in their hand and take, you know, usually 40% of the counter spells out of their deck in one shot on the play, that can actually be really, really good for you going forward in the games. So Lost Legacy is not too bad um, against control, but especially in there against combo. We're going to play two more Ruinous Path because we're just sort of that bad against Planeswalkers. Um, just most decks are right now. There's not a whole lot of protection against them. And we're very, again, bad against green-white tokens, and we've got to be able to kill their walkers. So two more copies of Ruinous Path to help shore up our worst matchup. Same thing with To the Slaughter. This can also help deal with Planeswalkers, um, which we are bad against, but we're also very, very weak to Bristling Hydra. That card can be a real problem for us in a couple of different decks from green-red energy to occasionally green-black counters play the Hydra. And that could be, it can really, like, 
the Hydra can just kill us because we can't do anything about it. Just really the only way we have of taking out Hydra, which is important. And then the three Yehini's expertise, mostly to again shore up that tokens matchup, but there's a lot of stuff we can play off of this. We can play removal to kill a creature that didn't die to the negative three, negative three. We can play a Yehini herself off of it. We can play Scrap Each Grounder, Aether Spear Harvester. Just a lot of cool stuff to do off of this. Even a Live Fast is fine. So expertise is just good um, out of the board, especially against these lower to the ground aggro builds and really good against the tokens builds. Here are your power rankings. A final score of 68, which is probably, come to think of it, the highest scoring deck that I've reviewed so far this season, but I really do have that much faith in it. It's a very high versatility score because I just think it's really good against most decks in the format. I kept talking about how bad the matchup was with green-white tokens. It's probably something like 30-70, you know, game one. It's just not a great matchup, but against nearly everything else in the format, from green-black counters, if they don't get Bristling Hydra especially, but green-black counters, um, any version of, of Sahili combo, we're very, very good against. Um, any of these like little aggro decks running around, we're usually quite good against, except for, again, Bristling Hydra out of Green Red Energy. We can have a problem with that. We're good against most control builds because we've got resiliency. Um, you know, we've got Scrap Heap Scrounger to help deal with those. Yehini to be indestructible against their removal. We've got Liliana to call back our threats after they've been countered and stuff. So lots of resiliency, pretty good in most games against blue-black control. So we've got good game against nearly every very important deck in the format, not to mention the two most important decks, which are all the Sahili Rai variants and Green Black Counters. The deck also just plays a bunch of really powerful cards, if you didn't notice, and has all these little synergies. You know, we've got the Artifact Synergy for Unlicensed Disintegration. We've got um, Weird Synergy with, like, Aether Sphere Harvester and um, uh, uh, Live Fast. We have the Synergy between Yehini and Kalidas, you know, just a lot of little synergies that all come together to be really powerful. Altogether, I don't think that the deck's weaknesses detract enough from its strengths to make it a deck that's not, you know, worth playing. Like, green-white tokens is a hard matchup for us, but it's not a deck that a lot of people are playing right now. A lot of people are flocking to combo and counters, and we are very good against those strategies. So, I'm not saying that this is going to win the Pro Tour or anything, but this is definitely what I would take. I know it's a rogue brew right now, but just a lot of really powerful stuff that deals with almost anything that we're going to come up against. So let me know how you feel about this one down there in the sideboard, what you would change, all of that stuff. I've also, by the way, before I get out of here, I've got this idea that maybe a Jund build of something like this would be okay. You know, you play the green-black counter shell with the snake, Rishkar, Verderous Gear Hulk, and Walking Ballista. But then you can also play Unlicensed Disintegration and Scrap Heap Scrounger and a couple of other things, you know, um, in sort of a, a Jundi kind of build. I think that would actually be really maybe well worth playing right now. So let me know how you feel about not only this deck, but that idea. Also want to know how you think the Pro Tour is going to go down, you know, it's just a day or two from now if you're, if you're watching the video the day I released it. So how do you feel like things are going to turn out, you know, is Sahili Combo going to really figure out the right build? Is Green Black Counter is going to continue its dominance? Is a deck just going to come up from out of nowhere that we've never seen before, you know? Maybe this one even. Like, let me know how you feel about... Pro Tour Aether Revolt and what you think is going to happen this weekend. If you enjoyed the content, like the content. It helps me out an awful lot, especially this time of the season. And you can also subscribe if you're new. Hit that bell to make sure you get the updates. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.